Good morning and happy Tuesday, campers. Wrangler here. And today, I, I guess I I poked the hippie bear in Oregon when I called him out for his nonsensical garbage that he came at uh, Kafar with. That's Kfar, you numb nuts. Anywho, he's going to kind of call me out on what he says are my beliefs. But they're not beliefs. They're facts, dumbass. They're facts. Listen. Learn. That's all you have to do. Enjoy, guys. Today we are going to respond to a gentleman who claims I poked the bear, but I mean, considering his response video, I must have poked the teddy bear, you know what I mean? This guy is, is just a fool. And I mean, like, imagine being so confident in what you're saying and like so confident that you're right, that you fail to accurately represent the other person's point of view, the other person's beliefs. like. If you can't even prove that you can accurately represent my beliefs, you don't understand my beliefs. You don't understand what I'm saying. And if you can't prove that you understand what I'm saying, why should I believe you when you say what I'm saying is true or what I'm saying is false? Like you, you can't even accurately represent my side. So, so you clearly don't know what you're talking about. But let's get started because this guy is just Mr. Correct, Mr. Macho man, <laughs> this guy, he just pays so little attention to what I say that only a fool would believe anything he says about me. And, and let me let me um prove it right out of the gates because um in the video he makes, he he had every opportunity to correct himself, every opportunity to realize that what I was saying is not what he's saying right? Because I address a gentleman that is not Kefar. In order to prove that this man has paid so little attention to what I say that he couldn't possibly like know or understand what I'm saying, um, I, I present to you Exhibit A, which is, you know, which is him claiming that I'm addressing his brother Kefar when I'm clearly addressing some other dude named Gary. Like, I, I make it very, very clear in the video that I'm addressing Gary. I say, oh, and then this other guy chimes in, and then I put... Oh, where to begin? Uh, well, let's go off with a couple of things. Uh, I am confident that I'm right. The reason that I'm confident I'm right is I have an education. And in obtaining said education, I was required to read. In this reading, I discovered this thing called laws. It's called a civics class. Perhaps you should audit one. Just, you know, yeah, I said audit. But, dude, you said KFAR was threatening you, that he was talking about going to work with ARs. You didn't even mention the name Gary in your video. Swing and a miss, dude. And they're, wow. The the picture of that dude's post, and it has his name. He, like, and then at the very end of my little spiel about this guy named Gary, I say, now let's get back to Kafar. And that's even in this dude's video. Like, th this dude thought I was talking about Kafar that whole time. That's how little attention and retention he has of what I've said. But, you know, all right, th this guy definitely understands and then we got this other guy chiming in and he says my argument is that i just want to ignore the law and i want to ignore what like the government says and all of this stuff i don't want to be held accountable by the government i can do whatever i want because i'm ignoring the government that that no I, i'm taking what our but you're missing it you're not being held accountable to the government you're being held accountable to the people when you break the law. How do you not get this? The government is the representatives of the people. That's us. We elected them to do this. They use those powers to appoint others to run agencies. All right. They, the legislators, create the laws. The federal agencies, for example, they enforce them. And because of the Tenth Amendment, 
the states and subdivision of states enforce them. That's how do you not get this? You're not being held accountable to the government. You're being held accountable to the people. Which means in a strange way, you're being held accountable to yourself as well. But you're just too stupid to realize it. Forefathers said, I'm taking their example and I understand it and applying that so that I can understand tyran tyranny and oppression. And I even asked the man to define liberty without first looking it up. And he fails to do so and then starts talking about going to work with his ARs like that somehow proves he knows what liberty means but he clearly does not know what liberty means because those ARs that he's packing I can guarantee you they're not full auto and why why aren't they full auto because the government has legislated laws that offend it's like no it's not it's not reasonable for the government to utilize fatigue to weaponize fatigue as a means to compel me into paying them to exercise my rights like, I have the right to travel. You can't say, oh, yeah, you have the right to travel on your own two legs. I mean, think about how asinine that is. Like, how am I supposed to carry large loads of merchandise from point A to point B, right? Because if I produce a cash crop, if I exercise my right to liberty, produce a cash crop, and then have to take that crop to market, how am I supposed to do that by walking? Like, be reasonable. I can't make a living utilizing only my two legs and then they'll say ridiculous things like oh you, you can use your horse or like you can use the bus or but let's start at the let's start at the horse because they're, they're two different issues so they're like oh get a horse and then you can like ride your horse no you can't if i were to try to ride a horse across the country and not only myself but like a large amount of people taking to the streets with horse well it's funny you bring that up dude um, uh, you know, because there was this time, there was this one time that a lot of people got on their buggies pulled by horses and they traveled from the East coast all the way to the West. You may have heard about it. It was called the Oregon trail, you know, cause they went to Oregon and that's how your hippie ass got here just out of curiosity. And dude, seriously. There is nothing unconstitutional about being required to possess, obtain a driver's license to operate a 2,000 plus pound vehicle that some can travel in excess of 155 miles an hour. There's nothing unreasonable about you being proving proficient in that vehicle considering it's 2,000 plus pounds moving at three digits in speed. Do you know what that can do to another person? Horses would, would only cause worse traffic for those in horseless carriages, for those in cars, you know, because the, the droppings the horse leaves behind, that's going to be a hazard on the roadway. You really want thousands of people having a horse leave behind drop. You mean horse shit, like what's coming out of your mouth right now? Like, no, that, that's unreasonable. Be, be reasonable. So then, then they'll be like, oh, well, you can take the bus or you can take, a, you can take the train or whatever, like public transportation systems, right? That's still paying in order to exercise your right to travel. I either have to pay for that bus ticket, which, you know, is like I should be able to travel without paying. And I could do that by utilizing my car. But instead, now I'm being compelled to pay somebody in order to travel, which would be the bus ticket. And I, I understand that there are some buses in some places that are funded and it's free to like get on the bus and like go. But you're still paying for that with taxes. You're just not directly paying for it. But it's still being paid for. Like you're still paying for your right to travel one way or another. If it's a driver's license, if it's license plates, if it's a bus ticket, if it's taxes to pay for public transportation, there you are paying for your right to travel. You shouldn't have to. All you should have to pay is gas to put in the car that you already paid for, that you already own, so that you can drive on the roads that your taxes paid for. Seriously. All right. Well, let's touch on a few things. One. 
You obviously don't want to drive, pay for a driver's license. You don't want to obtain one. You don't want to do registration. You don't want to do insurance and, or inspections in states that require them. All right, well, let's look at that for just a second. That driver's license proves that you are competent to operate said 2,000 plus pound motor vehicle at speeds we've already discussed. That insurance provides that you meet are now able to meet the financial obligations that you would be liable for when you take said vehicle at said speeds and slide into a family of six. So having said that, how liable do you think the state would be in a court of law in this lawsuit happy society we live in if they turned a blind eye and didn't require you to obtain these things, how liable would they be? What would happen to the state's budget when they got hit with a class action suit because they weren't requiring drivers to be licensed or insured? It's pretty simple stuff, people. He like brings up Tesla, and I've never once used the word Tesla before now. This is literally the first time I've said the word Tesla. I understand that a motor running off of electricity is still a motor. I understand the difference between an electrical engine and a combustion engine. I don't understand why you think I fail to understand that difference. But look, if, if you're talking to people on a regular basis that fail to understand that difference, I can give you some understanding for like why you're so bitter and salty regarding anybody who has a different belief than you do uh, like th that that is pretty asinine and hard to to swallow like somebody claiming that a tesla isn't a motor vehicle asinine you mean like asinine like some moron who doesn't want to be a good citizen and wants to pick and choose which constitution amendments that he will abide by because he only wants to keep the ones that benefit him and he wants to get rid of all the mean ones? Is is that it? I understand I have very few followers, but you, you gotta start somewhere. Uh, oh no, I have a hundred something followers, whatever will I do, I'll keep posting videos. And it, it's not that I think we should be defended from being laughed at or like a ribbing, yeah, all right, fine. You, you can laugh at me, you can make fun of me, I'm fine with that. But the least you could do is accurately represent my beliefs when you're making fun of me, right? Like that's what I'm talking about is like the opportunity to defend my right to to be represented accurately. Like if you want to intentionally misrepresent me and make fun of me, th that's kind of what I'm talking about. Like why, why would you do that it, for view? No, Gabriel from the family Privet, L. Bay, all caps. The man, not the corporation. I'm not here to defend you. I'm not here to support you. I'm not here to justify your beliefs or your misbeliefs because your beliefs are wrong. Your beliefs are, they don't exist anywhere in the Constitution. Dude, you're a communist, period. All right? There is no communism in capitalism. There is no room for communists in America. That's the end of that. And I'm not here to defend your beliefs because your beliefs are wrong. You know they're wrong. And if you don't know they're wrong, you need to pick a different strain. Who's All right. Like, like, all I care is that my views are accurately represented while you're making fun of me. That, that's the defense I'm talking about. By all means, make fun of me, but do it accurately. Then he wants to tell me I'm in the wrong country for believing in communist anarchism. Well, communism, but um, he says I'm in the wrong country for that garbage. Well, what are you talking about? This is the home of the brave and the land of the free. Uh, actually reverse that. We, we have the right to form new governments that accurately represent us, that, that we feel best secure our safety and happiness. Like, th this is literally the only place on the planet where a communist anarchist government could be formed by free, innocent men exercising their rights. So 
what are you talking about? Like, th this isn't the place. This is literally the place. Like, you understand so little about what our forefathers wanted that you think that this isn't the country for free, innocent men exercising their right to form whatever government they consent to be governed by? L let, let me put it like this. When your house is dirty, when, when you're born into a dirty house, do you abandon that house in search of a clean one? Or do you recognize that you have a duty to future generations to make up for the failures of your ancestors and clean the house? There are for saying that the Supreme Court legislates laws when they just do rulings. Excuse me. It's a different finger on the same hand. They are no longer bound to the checks and balances that our forefathers put into place. And if you think otherwise, you're domesticated by propaganda. Like, it doesn't matter anymore who's legislating, who's ruling. The fact of the matter is the government is compelling innocent people into obeying laws that they did not consent to be legislated. Laws that affect... Again, I, I feel we're kind of in a loop here because you don't listen. The elected representatives of our government, that would be senators, congressmen, they are passing the laws with our consent. They are. The consent is given the day they're elected. Period. All right. It doesn't matter if it's inconvenient for you. That's what you damn communists will never understand. We have a free society, but we are a nation of laws. Those laws are put into place by the legislature, the executive branch, signs them into laws. The Supreme Court, the judicial branch, you know, SCOTUS, you know, it's an acronym. They, it's letters that mean things. I digress. But the point is, is that all three of those sides work together. All right. One writes it. One signs it. One rules on it. It's not very complicated. And again, we elect the representatives. That's our consent. We, we give our consent for them to write those laws when we elect them. The president, we give him our consent to sign those into law. We also give him our consent based off the Constitution that allows him to appoint a justice to the Supreme Court as needed. All right. And is a double, call it a double indemnity. Those appointed, they have to be confirmed by Congress. It's not very complicated. But because you're too lazy to crack an effing book, you think it's easier to just go on YouTube and find this communist sod sit garbage. And yes, an anarchist is someone who wants to do away with laws. All right. And you call yourself a communist anarchist which is completely made up, all right? It's like a First Amendment fraudator. It's completely made up. It doesn't exist outside of here. And the fact that you, you don't even want to read any books, that you have never read a history book, but yet you want to claim to know history. Your only education, as far as I can tell, is YouTube. And that is just the saddest thing of all. And I've been getting a lot of questions in regards to the shirt you're wearing right now. What happened to the, to the side of it, dude? Is that like when you were rolling in shit at the Burning Man Festival? Just people wanted to know. Their rights. Their Gabriel from the family privet. Is that the family privet El Bay by any chance? Just curious. I'm not related to El Bay. I have no affiliate. <clears throat> I have no affiliation with El Bay. I, I don't know who that is. And they're not doing it without our... One thing that you seem to fail to comprehend, one thing that these people 
seem to fail to understand is that minority right is over majority rule. It doesn't matter what the majority have ruled. It doesn't matter if the majority vote and pass a law. They, they can't violate the rights of the minority, right? Because Seriously? That's how our na that that's how the constitution set up our country, you crack baby. Majority rules. How do you not get this? I mean, my God. The majority, you are never, ever going to have every single citizen of this country feeling the exact same way about any subject. It's never going to happen. And as our population continues to grow, and as we bring in more citizens from other countries to live here and become citizens of ours. You are never going to have everybody feeling the exact same way about this or this or this. All right. That's why we have the system that we do is everybody shows up to vote on this. It's yay or nay. All right. And whichever is the most popular and whichever is the majority is what's going to become law. It's set about in design in that document that you keep butchering, that you keep trying to pick and choose from. That's how it's set up in the Constitution. Majority rules. Again, that's why I brought up the dissenting opinions of the SCOTUS justices. It's because, yes, they're relevant only for informational sake, only for posterity. They're not relevant in the terms of what is actually going to become the case law because they were outvoted. That's why we have odd number of justices on any appellate court. It's for that same reason, so that you don't have a divide, so that you have either a majority or a minority, every single vote. And I know it's hard for you to hear me with your head shoved so far up your ass. And I'm sorry that I can't use small enough words, but I can't afford a damn fluent enough translator that speaks your level of moron. You're, you're always talking about how things are not absolute. It, exactly. The, the, leg, the majority cannot rule over the minority absolutely. The minority still has rights regardless of what the majority rules. Any earther? What, why, where did that come from? Why do you think I'm a flat earther? Like, that's how little you understand about what I say is that you think I'm a flat earther when I've never even like d defended that ideology. I literally used the word flat earther one time and it was to call out um, KFAR for telling me to go do research on my own. So yeah, that's what the flat earthers say. They say, go do research on my own. It's like, come on. The point rights and how little you understand about freedom. You're sitting there saying, oh, you can't own an AR or excuse me. You can't own a M16, A1, A2, A3, or A4 because you have no need for them. You, It doesn't matter if I have a need for them. Like as a free, innocent man, if I want to own a fully automatic M16, A2, or excuse me, M2, uh, I have every right to to own it. Like, like that's what freedom and liberty mean. It means the government can't tell me what I can and can't own. Like, I, I have every right to own a fully automatic M16, okay? So, so it doesn't matter whether I have a need for it or not. I have the right to own it as a free, innocent man exercising my rights. And for you to say, no, you can't own that because that person over there used it to hurt people, you are... First of all, no, you don't have a right to a select fire weapon. You don't. And the reason that you don't have a right to it is thanks to the National Firearms Act. You might want to look that up. The reason that they had to initiate that law or that act was because for a time, access to that type of weaponry went unregulated. It went unrestricted to where a person could walk into a hardware shop, a hardware store, and purchase a 1921 Thompson. They could walk into a hardware store and purchase a Browning automatic rifle. And then people went and did very bad things with them. And they weren't properly trained for them. Just like I have, I would bet an entire YouTube paycheck on the fact that you 
are not trained with a select fire weapon. And people, innocent people, always got hurt. And it, and that's why it's regulated. I've always been a pro-Second Amendment guy. But I don't believe for a second, for one moment, for one minute, for just a parcel, a millisecond, that every single person in this country needs to have access to a select fire weapon. Just like I don't believe, unlike the J-Town Press, that a person should be able to get on a commercial airline with a loaded weapon. You're, I'm not picking on you because I don't like how you look or the sound of your voice or where you're from. I think that where you're from, sadly, has a lot to do with your belief structure. But I'm coming at you because of the beliefs you're making public. The opinions you're trying to masquerade around is facts. That's why I'm coming after you. You're an idiot. You're punishing me for the actions of others. And that is wrong. You, you don't protect people by punishing them for the actions of others. That's called oppression and tyranny. I don't, I have no intention of overthrowing the current government. All I want to do is be free to exercise my God-given rights. That's literally all I want. And, you know, I have to act in self-defense. Like, that. that's not overthrowing a government. Like, acting in self-defense is not revolutionary. Acting in self-defense is not like means for a, a violence like you, you can't say i'm being violent because i'm acting in self-defense like um, I, I don't know where this pity check he is referencing comes from like i i think you completely failed to understand my point um and my point is that veterans do not serve or sacrifice anything for us because the current government is abundantly spoken like somebody who has never earned anything in his life. Spoken like somebody who lives off the work and sacrifices of others. How in the blue would you know what a veteran sacrifices or for what? Oh, you just became my new chew toy, bitch and often violating our rights. It's that simple. Like the, those people were paid by the government to compel innocent men and women into obeying laws that affect their rights that they didn't consent to be governed. They, they compromised their moral integrity for a paycheck. That, that's all they did. They didn't help you. They didn't protect you. The only thing protecting your rights right now is the fact that so many people here in America bear arms and would refuse to allow a blatant violation of our rights. You know, but the government is tricky. The government is sneaky. And they've they've literally convinced people that what is a right is actually a privilege. So, so that you see, there's more than one way to take away our rights. And th that goes further when you consider like being too afraid to utilize those arms in self-defense. That, that's another way the government has taken away our rights. Like wh what good is that AR in your gun safe if you're afraid to utilize it in defense of the rights of the innocent? They've effectively taken away your right to bear arms. Regard Are you seriously advocating against citizens who are not trained to smoke other people? Are you actually advocating against a citizen utilizing discretion before he unalives another human being? Regardless of whether you have them in your gun safe or not, if you're too afraid to use them. Um, when I said blue coats, I was referring to modern day police officers. I thought that was fairly evident, but you know, forgive me if it wasn't obvious. I never agreed to be a citizen. Like I, I was literally born and then, you know, attempted to be brainwashed into being a parole as defined by George Orwell in 1984. So, um, I mean, you, you can act like I consented to be a citizen or like I chose to be a citizen, but that's not true. It, it's not accurate. Like I, I, in fact, it's quite the opposite. I, I have absolutely no desire to be a citizen of the United States government. I have, if you don't have a wish, to be a citizen of my country, then get the hell out. There's another right you have. You can leave.
Anyway, guys, that's where we're going to wrap it up on this. I hope y'all enjoy the premiere. We'll see y'all tonight. KFAR will be there, but he won't be talking a lot. There will be a lot of head nodding. So, everybody, I hope y'all have a great Tuesday, and don't let it be a Monday 2.0. See y'all later. I love y'all. Have a good one.